Today we are doing my current meal prep routine, over 700 grams of protein, all healthy vibes, let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Farnham, this is More Seasoning, and today we are keeping it extra casual and just doing Jacqueline and I's current meal prep situation. We always like to have some protein on deck in the house, that way we can munch on it. And by protein, I mean like chicken or ground turkey, shrimp, salmon. I'm gonna show you how we prep these out and we make it easy so you can change the flavors up during the week after you already have it prepped. It's super helpful and also we got some veggies that we're gonna prep out to keep things light refreshing and also get your fiber in so I say we start with the proteins and hit the chicken let's go all right so we're just gonna keep this casual I'm gonna jump into the chicken first I like to use chicken breasts it's lower fat than thighs so usually I just come in here I do two or three packs obviously I grab organic if I can and then I like to slap the chicken breast towards the back of the roasting pan you can use a baking sheet for this no big deal and the reason why I like to put them towards the back of the baking pan is because in the oven, this is gonna be your hottest spot. So you have the thickest part of your chicken that's gonna be in the hottest part of the oven. That way we're making sure everything gets cooked thoroughly and evenly. Now we can also trim some of this fat right here. So I'm just gonna go in, cut a little bit of that fat off, piece right here. Make sure you're washing your hands as you're handling raw chicken. So now we're gonna grab just some olive oil. You can use avocado or grapeseed, whatever you want. And I just like to add a little drizzle that oil to the chicken. That way we give our salt and our pepper something to stick to. So then I usually just kind of go in with one hand. I'll rub that chicken down just like that. Hit away a nice little generous pinch of salt. Now we're gonna go in with some black pepper. We're gonna do the same thing. Cracking like joints, like a chiropractor. I don't wanna wash my hands again, so I grab some tweezers real quick, flip these birds over. Now we're gonna repeat with the salt again from a nice high distance. Hit it with that pepper from above. All right, now listen, I know this channel is called More Seasoning because we add tons of flavor, but after meal prepping for so long, I finally had this epiphany and I was like, wait a minute. If I prep out four chicken breasts and I make them all the same flavor, I'm gonna get tired of that flavor throughout the week. So therefore, I'm not gonna wanna eat it. So what me and Jacqueline have done now is we just hit salt and pepper on our chicken, then we shred it up and that's it. We leave it plain Jane because now you can turn it into chicken salad. You could throw some vinaigrette on it. You could throw it on a Caesar salad. You could do anything you want with the chicken. Throw buffalo sauce on it because now we have the option to make a variety of different flavors throughout the week, which makes eating your chicken and your proteins way easier to consume. All right, so we're about to throw these in the oven. If you have not bought this yet, please, it is going to save time and make perfect meat every time. It's in the description. It is a Bluetooth thermometer. So all I do is find the thickest piece of chicken that's down here. It looks like this one is the thickest. So I know this one is gonna take the longest to cook. And I just take my Bluetooth thermometer, I put it right in the middle of that chicken. So now I know when this one is done, Done. The rest will be done. They will be all cooked to the perfect temperature and I won't even have to open that oven once and let all that hot air out. So let's put them in. All right, so now all I'm doing is just setting my temperature to 155 for my chicken. And the reason why I do 155 and not 165 is because if you watch my chicken 101 video, when we pull these out, they're gonna continue to cook internally and it'll bring it right up to about 165, 170 degrees, which will make these cooked absolutely perfect. So at this point, my chicken is 61 degrees internally we're just gonna take this and put this in a 400 degree oven until we hit 155 all right my thermometer went off we're at 155 so I'm gonna pull that chicken out all right so as you can see we've got this chicken here it does look kind of anemic right there's not a lot of flavor not a lot of seasoning on it so we're gonna shred it up right after it cools down just a touch and uh, then we'll be able to flavor it however we want hold up all right at this point it is up to you what you want to do with your chicken you could leave it whole you could cut it you could cube it me personally I find it really easy to incorporate it into other things things when I shred it. So all I use is either a hand whisker or whatever the hell that thing's called, or I'll just throw a couple pieces into this KitchenAid with the whisk attachment and let it do its thing. Oh. I was trying to flex, there we go. We just leave it in there for a few minutes and then it'll just start to blend all that chicken up. And then as it starts blending more up, we just throw the other couple pieces in. This usually takes about four or five minutes, so I just let it do its thing while I clean up. All right, so it's been about four minutes. All our chicken is shredded. All we're gonna do is add it to our bowl and we're done. All right, this next one is super easy. We just have some ground turkey and we're gonna turn it into turkey taco meat. This is really easy to eat by itself or you can mix it up with some rice, some veggies, whatever you wanna do, but it's a staple in our fridge because it's super easy to eat and it's tasty. Let's go. All right, so for the turkey taco, super easy. I got a nonstick pan right here and then I'm just gonna take my taco meat. I got it on a medium high heat. My pan is nice and hot because I wanna sear the side first. So here we go. 
You hear that sound, you know we're cooking, literally. And I wanna talk about this guy right here. So this thing right here is going to make breaking up ground turkey, ground chicken, ground beef incredibly easy and you will save a lot of time doing so. I'll link it down below. I think it's only a few dollars. You could probably get them out of Dollar Tree by your house as well. All right, so it's been about two minutes. The bottom of my turkey is gonna be cooked so I just like to loosen the, the turkey up like that and then I'm gonna do a flip. You can use a spatula but I'm fancy, right? So here we go, nice flip. We got some beautiful browning right there. That's gonna be some flavor for us later on. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Give it about one minute, half the time, and then we're gonna go ahead and break everything up. All right, so it's been about a minute. I'm gonna go in with my little beater and now we're just gonna smash. All right, the only reason I'm covering this is so you guys can hear me because this gets really loud on camera. All we're gonna do is continue to just kind of break it up and mix it around until the turkey is completely cooked through. It should only take about two, three minutes. All right, so no joke, it's only been about three minutes and the turkey is completely cooked. So now I'm just gonna take my taco seasoning and three, wait, two thirds cup of water, not three quarters, two thirds cup of water, we get it in there. And then all we're gonna do is just mix this up. And now we're just gonna pour it on our turkey and let it simmer until it thickens up. Probably about a minute and a half, two minutes. Now I'm going in with my little turkey beater and I'm just mixing everything up so we get that flavor dispersed. Again, we're just gonna bring this to a simmer for a couple minutes until it's nice and thick. All right, so it's been about two or three minutes and as you can see, you're like, oh, it still looks a little liquidy, right? No, when we mix it up, that has thickened up beautifully. It is gonna be nice, juicy, full of flavor. At this point, we can turn our heat off and go ahead and throw our turkey into a meal prep bowl because it is done. All right, next we got some salmon. This is probably the easiest thing in the world to prep out. Loaded with great oils, great fats, and a ton of protein. This is one of my favorite go-tos. All you do, slice this guy open. Now this is one pound. You just go to your seafood department in your local grocery store and just ask for one pound of fresh salmon. This is what it's gonna look like. And then all I like to do, turn it on its back so the back side's up. And then I just like to cut these into little edible fillets. So that's about, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half right there. And then I just go ahead, cut through that tough skin. That's one filet right there, boom. Let's do it again. Ah, we'll keep them chubby, this guy's pretty fat. All right, so at this point, all I've got right here is a little baking sheet with some parchment paper on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my salmon on there. And the reason I use parchment paper instead of aluminum foil is because A, aluminum foil is expensive and B, I heard it can kind of leach some metals into your food and I just try to avoid stuff like that. All right, so as you can see, I've got my four fillets at this point. Now what me and Jocelyn personally like to do, we enjoy teriyaki salmon. So what I usually do is do two teriyaki and then I'll just hit the other ones with some salt and pepper. Again, that gives us the ability to change the flavor to whatever we want later. If we throw it in a Caesar salad, it could take on that Caesar dressing. If we just want some fresh lemon when we heat it up, it's not gonna combat the teriyaki. So all I do, literally, very, very easy, is I take my teriyaki sauce and then I just kind of drizzle it onto a couple fillets, just like that. And then I'll let that sit there. I'll hit the other ones with just a little shot of oil, just like that. Beautiful. And then I'll hit these ones with some salt and pepper. So again, nice pinch of salt on both. Then we'll hit it with some pepper from above. Now we're just gonna get our hands dirty and we're just gonna go ahead and rub that teriyaki sauce on all sides, all the way around, on the top. Make sure we get in those crevices. And then on the other ones, we just try to rub that oil, that salt and that pepper around. Again, just hitting all the sides. Okay, so guess who's back? Back again, it is our Bluetooth thermometer. Again, I'm just gonna go ahead and find the thickest piece of salmon. This one looks like it's the thickest. I'm just gonna go ahead and push that into the middle of the salmon. And I'm gonna cook these to about 150. That's where I personally like my salmon a little past medium rare. I like mine medium well. And all we're gonna do is throw this again in a 400 degree oven until we hit about 150, 155, and then they're done. All right, you gotta excuse me. I was eating some my meal prep, actually. Been about 10 minutes, our salmon's ready. Let's pull it out. And there you guys have it, perfect teriyaki salmon right here. We got some plain salt and pepper salmon. Again, we can add anything we want to it. So at this point, all we do, pull our little uh, thermometer out and then we just throw it in our meal prep container. All right, and the last protein that we have to prep is our shrimp. We're gonna turn this into cocktail shrimp. They're super easy to eat on the go. They taste great. One of my favorites, highest source of protein. Uh, we can actually prep this whole thing out by the stove. So let's switch the cameras over. All right, so shrimp cocktail, incredibly easy and it tastes better than any ones you get at the store. All I have is a small sauce pot right here. Well, medium sauce pot on a boil with water. All I'm gonna do is squeeze in the juice 
of a lemon. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the peels in as well. Next, we're going in with a couple big pinches of salt. Salt that water, salt those shrimp a little bit. And now we're gonna finish it off with just adding about 10 or 12 peppercorns in there. And at this point, we can carefully just lower our shrimp into the boiling water. It's only gonna take about a minute and a half, two minutes before they turn pink, and we can pull them out and throw them into a little ice bath. There we go, shrimp in. Now, gonna take this guy, go ahead and just make sure we mix them around so they're not stuck to the bottom there. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for about a minute and a half, two minutes. I'm gonna grab my ice water real quick, be right back. All right, I'm not kidding, it's been one minute. I filled up my bowl of ice with some water, and as you can see, these shrimp are nice and pink. Internal temperature is well over 145, which is the safe point. So we're just gonna take these shrimp, and we're gonna stop that cooking process throw them into that ice water. If you get some peppercorns in there, don't worry. It's not gonna hurt anything. All right, these have been in this ice water for about a minute. The cooking process has stopped. At this point, we can just drain them out. We'll throw them into a Tupperware. They're good to go. Hit them with some cocktail sauce. Hit them with some lemon. Easy money, good protein. I don't know what else to say. Let's move to the veggies, come on. All right, all our protein is out of the way. Now we're gonna dive into some veggies. I got three different things we're gonna do. We're gonna make some cucumbers, some sweet potatoes, and then a peppers and onion mixture that we can add to whatever we want. The first thing we're gonna do is our cucumber. All right, so I've just got a English cucumber right here, and then I'll cut both ends off just like that. And then just, you don't even have to do this, but I'll just do a couple strips for some decor. Now we're just gonna chop these cucumbers up into thin slices. And then we just take our cucumbers, we're gonna throw them into a bowl. And then what I like to do for these is just make a nice, like it's like a tangy, spicy little concoction. I don't even know what to call it, but basically I just take some rice wine vinegar and then I pour a good amount over those pickles, pickles, over those cucumbers. And I take some red chili flake, sprinkle that in there just like that. And then a little salt. Some people add sugar to this in order to get a good flavor, like sweeten it up a little bit, but I'm just keeping it healthy. And then all we do is just toss those in that rice vinegar. And there's all different ways that you can prep this kind of stuff out, but this is just my go-to. Like I said, I'm keeping it cash. And then at that point, if you just wanna add a little more rice vinegar in there, kind of submerge them a little bit, should be good to go. And you take a bite, we got some red chili flake on there, some rice vinegar. It's perfect. A little natural sweetness from the cucumber, a little heat, a little zest. Just hit it with some saran wrap or aluminum foil, throw it in the fridge, good to go. Yo, I forgot to tell you guys, once you got your saran wrap on here, before you go to eat them, all you gotta do is just give them a little toss like that, disperse all that vinegar, all those flakes, all that salt, good to go. All right, next, we're gonna prep out some sweet potatoes. You can do these a million different ways. I prefer to do them in little cubes, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. All we're gonna do is take a peeler, and then we're just gonna go ahead and start peeling the sweet potato. I usually do this over the sink or the garbage just because it kind of makes a mess, but whatever. All right, so now it is time to cube these. So the way that I do this is I always just take a thin slice off the side, that way I have a sturdy surface to work on right here, it's not gonna move around too much. And I just take my knife and I go right down the middle, just like that, put the butt of the knife in. These are always a little pain in the to get. This is dangerous. There we go. All right, so now it should slide. We just hit the other side. And then what I like to do from this point is just put it on its side, and then I can just do strips. Oh my God, and slice my arm off. And then we could just go in, do a couple more strips, one more, and then we can just turn these into little cubes. Once they're cubed up, throw them into a bowl. Then we're just gonna repeat with the other side. All right, so once we got all our sweet potatoes cubed up, all we're gonna do is throw them into a large bowl. Then we're just gonna go ahead and hit it with a nice drizzle of olive oil, maybe a tablespoon or two. And then I like to go in with a couple nice big pinches of salt, bring that flavor out. Some black cracked pepper. And I know a lot of people who like to put cinnamon and chili powder and cumin and different things on their sweet potatoes. Again, I like to leave mine plain just because I mix them in with a lot of different flavors and I don't want anything to taste too different. You know what I mean? So that's just the way that I eat right now. There's a ton of recipes online that you can find as, way, as ways to like spice up your sweet potatoes. But yeah, so I just get them in there and then I just go ahead and toss them up. And now we just gotta put them on a baking sheet with some parchment paper. All right, so once you got your baking sheet with your parchment paper, all we're gonna do is just sprinkle these on. We're gonna spread them out so we get like one you know, decent layer. We don't want anything sitting on top of each other too crazy. All right, and at this point, all we're gonna do is throw these in the oven at, technically it should be 375 because we use olive oil, but I'm just gonna do 400 for about 18 minutes or until tender and soft. All right, our sweet potatoes are ready. It's been about 18 minutes. Let's go ahead and pull them out. And there you have it. We have 
have our sweet potatoes. Let me grab a fork. And again, some people like theirs crispy, some like them a little softer. Me and Jacqueline enjoy them a little bit softer. So you just gotta make sure they're fork tender, just like that. So now at this point, all we have to do, scoop them up into a bowl, lid, good for the week. And lastly, we have our peppers and onions. This one is my personal favorite. I don't know why, I'm just a peppers and onions kind of guy. Very easy, we're just gonna knock this prep work out right now before we hit the stove. And we're just gonna cut these peppers and these onions into very fine slices. So we're gonna start here on the side. Just go around the edges just like that. Get this guy, shake them seeds out. And then what I like to do as far as prepping these out in order to get the thin slices, I put them flat side down and then I just come through and I just hit nice thin slices. You throw those in a bowl. And then we're just gonna rinse and repeat. All right, once you got your orange one, let's move on to the green one. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna hit that from the sides. Follow the groove all the way down. And then again, we're gonna go wax side up and then we're just gonna use that finger to guide and we're just gonna hit these with thin slices. Scoop them up into the bowl. All right, at this point, you know the vibes. We got our red pepper again, just following those grooves all the way down. Just like that, thin slice it. All right, once those peppers are done, we're gonna move on to our white onion. This one's real easy. We're just gonna take the top off and then we're gonna go ahead and just cut this in half. Peel that outer layer off, get that skin out of there. Do the same thing on this side. And then what I like to do is cut, you see these little lines in here? This is basically, let's consider them the veins of the onion. If you cut with it, you're gonna get less of that eye bleeding, AKA crying. If you cut against them, you're just gonna like spill that blood everywhere, right? And it's just gonna, it's gonna be a miserable experience. So we're just gonna cut along this way. Again, nice thin slices. All right, now we're just gonna scoop what we got into the bowl. Oh my God, my eyes are watering. And then we're gonna do, ugh. All right, and now we're gonna do the same with the second onion. Oh. All right, so what I just told you about cutting along the veins will make you cry less. I mean, that's what everybody says scientifically, but that was probably the worst onion cutting experience I've had in a very long time. So we're gonna take these onions and then just like we did with these sweet potatoes, we got ourselves a nice big bowl and then we're just gonna dump the onions and the peppers into this bowl. Then we got our handy dandy olive oil. We're just gonna do a couple nice drizzles, two or three tablespoons in there. And then we're gonna toss that with some salt and pepper. One, two, I'm gonna do three generous pinches. We're gonna do about 50 cranks. All right, and now we're just gonna toss. You gotta get your hands in there just to make sure everything's nice and mixed up. You can't, look at that. That doesn't even, I mean, that looks delicious. And it's just vegetables. All right, so at this point, we can head over to the stove and saute these up. Last thing we have to prep out is our peppers and onions. They smell incredible, and all there is is salt, pepper, and olive oil on them. I've got a deep saucepan right here on a medium-high heat. We're just gonna add these in. We should get some poppage, let's go. Get them boys a toss. All right, so at this point, all we're doing is sauteing the peppers and onions down until they're nice and soft. We'll get a little bit of caramelization going on. That flavor will be incredible, I promise you that. And because we cut everything so paper thin, it should not take very long at all to get to that point, so let's cook. All right, so about halfway through when things start to soften up a little bit, I'm just gonna go in with some oregano real quick. I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon and a half of that oregano, and then we're just gonna go ahead Toss that around, let that oregano toast up a little bit, let those flavors blend together. All right, I'm not kidding, it's only been five minutes and these are perfectly done. Look at that. They're nice and soft, but still have a little bit of snap to them. We got that oregano that kind of blended in with all of those flavors from the onions and the peppers. At this point, we're done. All our stuff is prepped out. We're gonna throw these peppers into a Tupperware and then we're good. And there you have it. This is my casual go-to meal prep right now. We've got over five pounds of meat and seafood prepped out for the whole week. Some vegetables, the sweet potatoes, and it's very versatile. We can change the flavors up throughout the week as we go. Hey, listen, if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed please scroll down hit that like button hit that subscribe button and drop a comment below and let me know which one of these meal preps are you most interested in trying my name is Farnham this is more seasoning this is a ton of meal prep for you guys I appreciate y'all thank you for watching we out